Hey, I'm Chris Roth, the professional prospector, and today we're going to be making some Tesla bullion. Hey, let me tell you this story about it, and kind of an interesting story. About a year, well, a little over a year ago, my wife was at a gas station and she was putting gasoline in her car. And uh, the way this gas station is situated, it's on a corner, but you can see a, a rather large uh, thoroughfare street that runs. Uh, past the gas station and she was filling her car and looked and she could see this little sports car driving real erratically down the road and was like whoa this is kind of strange and uh, not just a matter of a few seconds later the car turned and went up onto the side of a hill next to the road it's not a very big hill but just a little slope embankment and crashed and uh, within a matter of seconds it caught fire which you know the the rumors about tesla's catching fire yeah there's there's something to that and anyway uh, she was thinking oh I, I should call 911 but well, quickly other people on the road got out and she could see across the road there there were people on their phones and she said oh they're dialing 911 and calling for help and uh as the car caught fire um a guy stopped and ran over to the car and bravely opened the door and unbuckled it was a lady that was driving it and uh and she was unconscious and then he pulled her out of the car that was burning and pulled her to safety i never found out we never found out what uh what the actual cause was what a medical condition or something whatever the cause was that the lady passed out or and crashed at the wheel it was a one car accident that was it and uh but the car burned it was destroyed and uh it, it started a little brush fire on the side of that slope and the fire department and the police got there pretty quickly and they really within you know with, within a, a short time they had the fire out and they had the the car out although you know um lithium battery fires yeah, they're kind of dangerous because you can't just spray water on them because lithium reacts with water. Uh, that's why lithium batteries are well sealed because they can't react, they can't be exposed to air and water because they react with air and with water. Anyway, uh, they took the material, you know, the remainder of the car and hauled it away and cleaned up the area a little bit, although you could see that burn scar there. It wasn't very big. It was maybe a tenth of an acre, a little bigger, not much bigger than that. And uh, you could see that burn scar for a long time. And they took away like 98% of the vehicle, but when it crashed, it kind of broke apart. And and uh, the folks that, you know, the, the trailer, the, the rig that hauls the haul the vehicle away you know, they cleaned up most of everything but they left some people some parts and stuff behind and it was kind of weird i drove by it a long time because it's a it's a thoroughfire that i go up and down all the time and i noticed hey there's there's pieces there and one day i stopped my vehicle parked and, and walked over there to to see you know the parts and stuff that were remaining there because it been sitting there for a year and there was some fiberglass a lot of the exterior of Tesla is fiberglass and the fiberglass burns and uh, there were some other pieces there as well and there were a number of pieces of aluminum and so that's what we're gonna work on today let me show you so here's the pieces I picked up all of them show signs all the aluminum shows signs of melting which that fire was pretty hot. You know, lithium burns at a high temperature, very hot. And there's uh, steel bolts and things that are holding this together, so I'm going to have to clean it up. But all the pieces of aluminum show signs of melting. And what we're going to do is we're going to recover this aluminum for recycling and pour it and make bars out of it. So come along with me today as we make some Tesla billet bullion. Now I mentioned the steel that's in this. Um, I'm gonna have to remove that steel and I may have to break these things down a little bit to get them to a size that I could put into the crucible in my furnace, but uh, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna clean these up right now and separate the aluminum and the steel and get ready for a little melting and casting. So I've gotten those aluminum pieces taken apart. 
uh, got them here in uh, the crucible now it was kind of unusual because uh, some of the bolts that i thought were steel turned out to be aluminum you know they want to make uh, electric cars any electric cars not just tesla but all electric cars you want to use as light of materials as possible simply because you can only store so much energy in the batteries and if you have a big heavy you know lead sled vehicle um, a lot of energy is going to be used in moving all that heavy steel around and so by making it lighter you know you can go more miles on the batteries that you have so all electric cars are going to have lots of aluminum in them but it was also a little hard to take the parts apart because I mentioned that they've kind of been partly melted well you know when you have a, a bolt going into something that's been tweaked because it's partly melted a little bit yeah getting those bolts out of there is a lot harder so anyway I finally got it taken apart we've got a lot of the aluminum in the crucible here we're gonna put it in the furnace and get it fired up and get started melting and then we're gonna pour ourselves some bricks of aluminum so let's get started Bring you back when we're ready to pour. Okay, I think we're about ready to pour our first bar, so let's do that. Open up the furnace, grab hold of the crucible, but do it safely. Okay. Clint the block. Okay. Got our aluminum and let's make a pour. Perfect. All right, that's the first bit, and now we're gonna have to take some of the other pieces like this and break them up and get them in and pour them as well. So we're gonna get started with these bigger pieces. It took me a lot more effort to chop them up than I expected, but we're gonna get them all melted down and make some more aluminum bricks. Let's get started. Here we go. All right, we're ready to pour again. Don't mind the noise. The neighbor happens to have a tree service over and the tree service is removing a tree. Of course, on the day that I want to film. That's just how things work. Come on, there we go. All right, here we go to pour. Okay, let's put in some more pieces. We're pouring our third and final bar. I wanted to get a little bit closer so you could see it better. So here we go. Get 
get the crucible. I thought we might have a little bit more than what the all right so we did have a little bit more than what the first mold could hold we got three full-size bars and one small partial bar and I'll weigh it up and we'll talk about it when we get back to the whiteboard Okay, so after all that pouring and melting and casting, I ended up with three aluminum blocks and one little bit of overpour. And total for the all the aluminum that I recovered after cleaning it all up and everything was about 3.59 pounds, 3.6 pounds, say. And that comes out to be uh, about three dollars and twenty-five cents worth of aluminum. What I think might be cool is to take this three and a half pounds of aluminum and maybe if I could someday, I won't do this right away, but maybe make a, a model or get some kind of a model of a Tesla. Cast an aluminum Tesla made of aluminum from a Tesla. Be kind of cool. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. This is the second of my series of videos on aluminum. The next one, we're going to get into some really cool stuff about the geology of aluminum. How aluminum is just in all kinds of minerals, including a lot of gem minerals. We're going to talk about that too, gem minerals with aluminum. And then we're going to talk about the geology of aluminum deposits and how they form and how they're mined and, and then how they take that aluminum minerals and convert it into aluminum metal aluminum is really cool and very interesting oh and i'm going to tell you the story of how aluminum used to be a super expensive metal in the 1800s in the late 1800s aluminum was as valuable per ounce as silver in fact even before that in the earlier part of the 1800s aluminum was as valuable as gold so uh we're going to talk about how aluminum went from being basically a super precious metal to being pretty common and only worth about 90 cents a pound. I hope you'll enjoy it and that'll be coming up next week. But now most of my videos that I do, I talk about prospecting for gold and finding your own gold. And I will be getting back to that. We're going to do a few more videos on exotic metals after the aluminum series. And then we're just going to dive into gold. The weather will be a little bit warmer by then. And we'll just dive into gold and really talk about getting gold hot and heavy. But uh, most of my videos, like I say, are about prospecting for gold. And I wrote a book about that. If you want to become better at finding gold, if you want the skill, if you're willing to invest the time, uh, becoming a skillful prospector and be able to f go out and find gold in the field. I wrote a book about it with all kinds of information. It's like an encyclopedia. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold. And I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself Fistful of Gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed, and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon, and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month, and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website, and the website is 
uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.